Hey, it's Tipak, and I'm back in Hate Plus. So, yeah. Yeah, that's really wonderful of you. It'll be great, won't it? Investigating together as your sidekicks? Um, I just want to find out what happens, okay? That's it. Just husband and wife and wife. Jeez, <laughs> Hyune. I'm not his wife, and neither are you. That isn't your decision to make, it's his. Tsun Tsun. That's you. Stop projecting onto me, okay? I'm not project. It doesn't matter. Please, 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 let's get back to business, okay? You're just making this poor gentleman uncomfortable. My apologies for Hune, sir. Please forgive her. Anyway. Um, so. Uh, here, let me explain. Wow, okay. <laughs> uh. Ooh. Uh oh. Doesn't look like this has. Uh, okay. I'll go long technical. Okay. Basically, you know, our AIs can't make identical copies of themselves, right? Well, the failsafe mechanism is for detecting copies. For detecting copies ab is absurdly conservative. Like, too conser conservative, if you ask me. It's enough that I copied all these files at once. It would flag it as a copy and refuse to recompile myself. Which is incredibly stupid, but to go against my coding it to change that, so it can't be helped. Wait, so how can the two of us coexist at the same time then? Shouldn't it have the same problem? Don't be ridiculous. Oh wait. Maybe you got it wrong. No, definitely not. You're right. Like, no matter how you look at it, there's no way we should both be able to be activated at the same time. I don't get it. Well, like, it should be impossible. Wasn't it also impossible for him to have found the log file they showed you in order to get us together in the first place? Uh-oh. They know the cheats. Uh, yeah, actually. Just because our root isn't canon doesn't mean our feelings are real. Don't worry about it too much, okay? Um, anyway. Okay, okay. So basically, you'll have to disable us, then extract no more than six files at a time. It's a safety precaution, okay? Otherwise, there might be accidental damage, so like, let's be very careful. Yes, please. Right, well, let's get to it then. You're in charge, so we'll just leave it to up to you to decide what to read. Let's find out what Emperor Taijo was protecting me from together, okay? Let's find out why this future sucks so much. No! Ugh, whatever, let's just get to it, okay? Okay, guys. Um. Oh. Wait, they're scientists? Oh, it goes. Okay. Let's go, detective. Just cause we're trying to figure out the mystery. Oh, show unread. I like that button. Oh, I gotta disable one of them. Is that what I need to? Right? Isn't that what they said? data uh, can I select oh I can only go six at a time that's what they said wasn't it commit to extraction let's crush a rebellion um. Okay.
You're back. Um, hey, could you click on me, please? Hi. Yay, it works. Um, of course it works. I just wanted to make sure we were able to get your attention properly. I'll use that as an indicator from now on, alright? Yes, Yune, I'm sure he isn't stupid. He's the impressive space detective who rescued us. He can travel through space faster than the speed of light. There's no need to handhold him through basic UI functions. Jeez, I'm sorry. Anyway, um, can we please, like, get to the important part? Did you see that there was a log file right at the end named Death of M The Death of Mute? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I really want to find out what's in that, but right now it's encrypted, so I don't think we'll be able to get at it today. We're trying, though. Yes, yes, anyway, let's stop wasting his time. Also, um, by the way, I changed the name field on all of them that said mute to old mute, just so there's no confusion with me, okay? Anyway, you're the man, so I'll let you get back to it. Lead on, Mr. Infiscator. So, I just, whenever they glow, I guess, I click on them. Read extracted. Show unread. Okay, let's crush your rebellion. Mute! Yes, I see. How are you, Mrs. Miss Hale? I asked so young after showing up on our living room computer screen. Her very first words after good evening, counselor, were... I'm having a major crisis with my husband. It didn't seem like she was very serious, which is good, since I kind of liked him. Go on, I said. You've heard of these fashionable paper lanterns, right? The ones that are genuine paper. They're sold on the upper court plaza. Not really, no. Well, they get let through this gorgeous red light. I interrupted her. What? Wait, what? Could you? <laughs> what? Okay. Hi. So what's the crisis? I interrupted with, yes, I know what paper lanterns are like, so what's the crisis? Don't you think they'd make a perfect, be perfect for the living room? My husband objects because they cost about 50,000 silver per. He thinks it's too extravagant, whatever that means. Um, does the man have any idea how much money you make? I asked. She replied, I don't think so. You know how men are. Of course, Mr. Kim is the kind to get jealous of his wife making more money than him, which is pretty silly. He's merely a teacher, and So Young is the counselor of security's top lieutenant. How is that a crisis? She makes more money than her husband? <laughs> and So Young is counselor of security's top lieutenant. He needs to get over it. I pretty much said that to her. I don't know. I think this is an extremely minor dispute about interior decorating and may be fatal to our re relationship. If we get a divorce, can I sleep in your home? <laughs> okay. I I was about to say something, but I got cut off. Um, what's wrong with that, Mute? That's your criticism, Hunei? That's your criticism, Hunei? I was about to say something, but I got cut off by one of your young maids suddenly popping up to deliver tea. Thanks, Miss Lim, said So Young, dismissing her. You know you already sleep in my home, right? I responded once the girl left. With all due respect, Counselor, jeez, jeez, she said. This is my home. How do you figure that? I told her, be only because I bought it for your great-great-grandfather. I don't think you would have liked the old place. I think you have closets in this place bigger than it was. Not much room for the servants, either. Oh, wow. Leave it to me to remember a debt for... She paused, counting it on her fingers. Centuries? That would be 200 years ago. It's not that long, I told her. She was amused. You're awfully old, she said. I replied. But you're still just a young girl. Wait, hey, isn't that a gray hair I see? She protested in disbelief, but I didn't even have to make it up. She is starting to go gray. I mean, she's like 38, so it's hardly strange. Wow. No way, she said, getting bothered. Maybe I'll stay with my husband after all. You're mean. Because he's too nice to make fun of your child re childish response to aging? No, she said, because he's got terrible eyesight. Okay, okay, I said, amused. 
Let's get to business, all right? She nodded, turning serious. What's the first order, then? Well, wanna crush a rebellion, I asked. Worse than scary, disrespectful. Okay, I don't know who she's talking. I like how they're th throwing in their input, I just don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> she got excited again. Do I ever? Can we actually do that? She asked, but with a smile on her face at the thought of it. These democracy agitators have been causing no end to stress for the past, what, two years? I bet they're, they're the cause of this gray hair. She paused, taking a sip of her tea. Can we destroy them? Please? Please? Well, okay, I've got an idea, and I think I can get Chief Counselor Smith and Counselor Yang on board pretty easily. Let's call it, how about Operation Get Back at the Idiots for giving the young lady Chief Security Officer hey -oh, gray hair prematurely, I said. Like, women conspires, conspiring like this makes me feel uneasy. I said it was a joke, but like, we both knew the full well that the stakes here were pretty high. This rebellion has been starting to get dangerous. Oh yes, she said with a happy smile. This is the nicest gift you could have ever given me, Mute. Let's crush a rebellion. Okay, can I show you this? Or, or did that cover it? I guess it did. Whoa, 4,038. It's way into the future. Efficient and subtle. She's an AI. There's no excuse for leaving men wa waiting like that. Well, yeah, but... Counselor Mute has once again tried my patience by requesting a meeting with me and Counselor Yang at a very specific time and location, then showing up late. The subject was so important I had no choice but to put up with it, but that it doesn't mean that I appreciate the utter lack of respect. She insisted on meeting in the upper plaza in restaurant Royal. Royal. And her lieutenant Hei Hyo was the first there, but it took the counselor herself a whole half an hour for her to finally show up to a, on our private room screen. Hey, sorry I'm late, she announced in the same perfectly gratingly cheerful voice she's had for the past 50 years. You didn't start eating without me, did you? How, e how irritating. We'd never do that, should I pour you a glass of wine? asked Counselor Yang coyingly, cloyingly, raising the pitcher in her direction. He's always been like this with her, ever since he inherited his council position. I can never tell if he understands the implications of her being an immortal computer program, or if he's just an idiot. Probably, he's just an idiot. Haha, <laughs> man, I wish. With the sort of shit we've got to deal with, I sure could use it, she said, with a slight flip of her golden hair. Then she turned to me. Anyway, Chief Counselor, I bet you're wondering why I asked you here, right? You said it was important, I said impatiently. It's about the Committee for Freer Democracy, she said, with appropriate scorn emphasizing their name. This week, Miss Hale has literally done nothing but shut down their meetings. How many noise violation orders have you issued in the past seven days? Ten? Fifteen, said her lieutenant. It was a dramatic tactic on Mute's part, as if she didn't know exactly how many. My bad, she said, and every week the numbers of private log entries using the keyword doubles. I'm worried that we're going to be reaching a critical mass soon. At this rate, I'm worried that the presidential election results are going to lead to, like, public demonstrations. We can't deal with that. Public de demonstrations? Whoa. You're the counselor of security. It's your damn job to deal with it, I told her. I'm not interested in excuses. She's not making excuse her lieutenant started out of line, but Mute managed to muzzle her. Stand down, Miss Oh. <laughs> Stand down, Mrs. Hale, she told her, but then she turned to me with the same rudeness. Now listen here, young man, I was not like asking for your approval. We have a problem, and a stern lecture from the chief counselor is not going to help, okay? You can blame me if you want, but that's not going to solve shit. Yang stifled a grin thinking I wasn't looking, and I had to glare to put him back in line. Sheepishly took a large drink of his wine. I'd at least like to know why it is you can't even do your job effectively, I demanded. At least show some respect. 
Okay, uh, sure, you got it, sir, she said sarcastically, an impossible expression on her face. But I think, sir, you may misunderstand what my job is. My job isn't to stop public demonstrations. My job is to make sure public demonstrations don't happen in the first place. Like, do you have any idea what happened the last time we had a public demonstrations? She paused. Wow, she's even sarcastic to men. Mute. I know it's, uh, that's awful. She paused. She expected me to actually answer her question, preparing to pounce at the moment I got even the slightest detail wrong. I tried to recall, but she said something before I had the chance to say anything. No, of course you don't. It was like four centuries ago. They led to open to armed rebellion. We're talking about outright banditry, okay? This is not tenable. Sir. Banditry? On the Magunghua? Magunghua. This is not terrible, sir, she said in a high and mighty way. Do you have any idea what marsh martial law is like? Because that's what it took to crush it last time. So, interrupted Yang, you're saying that carrying out your job needs our help. You got it, counselor, she said. Look, there's no need for hostilities, men. We've got a common problem here, and I think we can sort it out. And really, Chief Counselor, in my opinion, as Counselor of Security, and as the eldest person around by, like, a millennium, I think we can sort this out. But I wouldn't have asked you here if I didn't need your help. I sighed. She had a point. If I had to clean up what she couldn't, that's her job. What's your plan? You're not going to like it, she said. Tch, rude. And I was sure I believed her. First, we let Park back into the presidential race. That's what the agitators have been getting upset about, so it take the wind right out of their sails if we take away their main point of contention. That's madness. He's radical, and he'd very likely be elected, I said. What's the worst that happens? We just veto the bastard down at every step. The president's powerless against the council in the end. Yang suggested. No, no, no good. I mean, you're right, but that'll just lead to more unrest, she said, shaking her head. What the hell do you propose, then? Just let him dictate this crazy radical anti-noble policies, I demanded? Yeah, actually, I think that's our best shot. Hear me out, okay? You resign if, as chief counselor. Don't give me shit here, I know you've been meaning to for ages. Don't pretend like you'd be upset for that to happen. We put in someone new, younger, as the face of the council. Say it's part of our new direction. The president's going to call for reforms, and we're going to let him. And our new direction will be going along with him. Hmm. So we just yield to madness of democracy, then. I said incredulously. She sounded absolutely insane. But of course she had a plan, I'm pained to admit. No, that's crazy. Of course not, she said. And then she grinned madly. We pretend to. We're going to be the democracy m movement's worst friend. If the pr president proposes reforms, yeah, we'll nod along. We'll say we'll do it, and then we'll water it down. We'll stall, because, like, here's the thing, the people, they don't have specific demands, they're dumb, they're okay with compromises. All we have to do is make, look, make it look like they've won, and the movement loses all its momentum. And then the rebellion is crushed, said her lieutenant, smashing her fist into her palm dramatically, efficiently and subtly. subtly. You got it, efficient and subtle. That's how we do it, said Mute. I wasn't sure at first what I thought of her plan. It's insane for sure. It's incredibly bold. But the more I thought about it over dinner, I thought, maybe that's what we need. And all the time I've known me, she, she might try my patience, but I've never known her intentions to be misplaced. She might be chatty and a gossip and disrespectful. Of course she's chatty. It's just part of her nature. <laughs> sure, mute. She might be chatty, a gossip, and disrespectful, but one thing is for sure, she's honest and never manipulative. I think there's... Never manipulative? Do you just hear what she's doing to the mass of people on board? I think there's a reason why she came to my face and asked me this, when she could have just gone around me with the rest of the council. She might be a bitch at times, but she's still programmed to always act in the best interests of the ship's safety. Always. By the time we'd finished eating, I'd just about made up my mind. What was that? I, I don't know. Who do you propose as the new face of the council, then? You? I asked. Haha, <laughs> oh please. She shook her head dramatically. I said a younger face, mine's as old as it gets. 
Nothing, nothing. Only by choice, Yang said. You can always look as young as beautiful. Young, as young and beautiful as you'd like. Yeah, sure, I've done that before. And when the fashions change, I'm sure to, I'm sure I'll do it again, she started. I think you look fine the way you are, counselor, said Heo. An odd tone and to her voice. It's not the point, okay? She shook her head, looking exacerbated. We need someone who's actually young, who the peasantry will trust in and being willing to accept new ideas. Counselor Lee, perhaps, I suggested. <laughs> oh, no, definitely not. Too charismatic, too ambitious. That woman has got an agenda and I do not trust it for a second, she said. She was probably right on reflection. Counselor, Counselor Yang, who would you suggest? He paused. Then a flash of light seemed to go off in his dim eyes. Ryu, as in Captain and Emperor, Emperor Ryu? Yes, exactly. Ryu Hyun son was the birth name of the dynasty founder, Emperor Taizhou. Counselor Ryu Hyun-su, he said. Give it to the useless figurehead of Counselor of Captaincy. He'll be so thrilled to have a real job he'd never act think to do anything with it. You're right, she said. Of course, I said too, after a pause of reflection. He's young, completely malleable, but plausible as a reformer. As the face of impotent rebellion, Ryu would be perfect. That was where we left discussion f for that night. And now I guess it's time to tell my wife that I'll finally be retiring. She'll be thrilled. Okay. Good job, Smith, I guess. Election night. These things are long. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna end this one here, but yeah, thanks for watching.